right there. Okay. Um, I want to look at uh, the prayer request. Uh, Dot uh, had her procedure yesterday. Uh, things went well. She's home. Supposed to be staying off her feet for a few days, 100%, until she goes back into the week. Uh, but she's still going to need our prayers. Uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've gone by three or four times in the past two weeks to try to see Robert, her son, and uh, I've never caught him up. Uh, I think I think you have Gina. Have you caught him? Okay. Uh, well, he was in the bed and he kept his eyes kept closing, but he heard me because okay, you you, you, you headed back. I never made it back down the hall. That's fine. So I I just uh, prayed uh, uh, and saw him and stuff. So uh, remember her. Uh, Judy had her surgery this morning. Uh, we actually talked to her um, uh, a little bit ago, and uh, she's doing fine. Uh, she's uh, a little sore. They've got a drain. A drainage tube or something on her, uh, and uh, uh, she said she just touched woozy. And I said, "Well, uh, the only thing you can do for that uh, at this stage of the game is just get a box of bonbons because those are really good for that." And uh, and she thought that was a good word, a good word. So, um, but uh, but she's going to be doing okay. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Uh, of anybody else, who who else we need to to kind of pay attention? To? You went to the doctor Thursday last week. Yesterday. 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 I'm going back tomorrow. Okay. Uh, he looked. I went to a regular doctor. I'd see a dermatologist again. On the second. On the second. Okay. Uh, I'm still peeling, and uh, but everything. We just went for physical yesterday. He did. Okay. And Mine's tomorrow. <laughs> and my, and cousin, my cousin, uh, she fell and fractured her shoulder. And my, her husband, my cousin, uh, okay. he had cataract surgery. And I like, just remember him, he's doing well from it right now. And my children and grandchildren. Okay. And it just dawned on me. You said a snake. I said a lizard. I know. But I think even maybe more appropriate is a shrimp. Because <laughs> you get those little bowl shrimp, and you got to peel them off. Uh, you're you, there. Can kinda, you can kind of get two in at the same time. So I just thought I'd. Poor baby. I just, I just want her to have some ammunition because I think she may need it in, in these days. But uh, certainly we'll continue to pray. Anyone else? Yes. I'd ask prayer for a couple I know, Jamie and Renee. Yes. And the wife, Renee, has been cleared to go back to work. And Jamie's fever is down to 99, so it's getting better. Okay. Yes. Uh, Jane, I saw Amy today. Uh huh. She was looking really good, just her whole face and everything. And she has gained a few pounds. She's up to 123 now. She's so proud of that. And uh, Susie is too, so she's cooking and training, you know. Good, good. Yeah, she I mean she's got a lot on her own shoulders and then and then all the stuff with, with Charles and everything and, and the family was here, it was good, but they're all gone. Uh, I've seen her since since all of that had gone by and, and she was looking better. Uh, she really wants to get stronger and the weight will help. Uh, strengthen her so she can come back to church. She really wants to come back. And also, she's got one of these rolling walkers, and she loves that thing. She oh. Loves it. And she can, she'll be able to get about more. Okay, well, good. Yeah, we definitely want to hope for that. Um, I want to pray for the family uh, of a friend of mine. We, uh, when, I, when I went to seminary in 2002, he was uh, uh, an older student like I was, almost the same, gosh, in so many ways, our lives and ministries have tracked. Um, he was about the same age, he was a year younger than I am, I think. And uh, we started seminary in 2002, we went through the masters, uh, got all that, and we actually started the, the PhD together. We neither one was finished it, but, but at least we worked through everything, we just didn't finish it. Um, but he, uh, uh, he had some family difficulties and he ended up moving down to South Carolina 
to be near some of them, uh, some of his kids more than adults. Uh, he worked a, a secular job. He was bivocational. And then the last couple of years, he actually got full time at a church uh, that called him. And, uh, and it was neat because uh, I got a thing on Facebook, something about, uh, you know, him at Eureka Baptist Church. And I thought, oh, my goodness. And I thought, well, I, could, I just come here. You know, a little bit, and I thought, well, how did how did I, I hate that I hate the, the social media. I really do. You know, I may use a little bit, but I really don't. I don't like him. And I thought, well, he messed it up, and so I didn't think anything. And then, a, a, like a month later, I saw his name pop up, and it was like I thought they did it again. So I finally figured out, and I called him. I still had his phone number. I called him. He was a pastor in Eureka Baptist Church in South Carolina, mm -hmm. and uh, so we thought that was pretty neat. Uh, but just a little over a month ago, uh, I noticed, I noticed, a, what was it, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday? Uh, I happened to be going through Facebook. I do it like once a month just looking. But he passed away last Wednesday. Oh. Uh, in the middle of July, it, he got, the, got COVID. I guess his wife was tested positive too. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't too long and he was in the hospital, ventilator, kidney shut down, all kind of. Oxygen, bad, platelets, bad, everything was bad. And uh, she got better, uh, and, uh, but he passed away uh, last Wednesday. And so um, uh, just, just a difficult time for them. Uh, that's, that's the only person that I know personal, you know, that's my friend that, that has done that. Uh, and, uh, and when we look at the numbers, and even I do, we'll think, well, we got 320, 30, 40, whatever it is, million. Uh, and we've had 175 or six, something like that, that have died of this. Um, and, uh, and we have, gosh, between flu and an accident or something else, you know, we lose a lot. But, you know, but every one is somebody's family. Uh, and so regardless of statistics or numbers or percentages, it's, it's still somebody, uh, you know, who had a connection to somebody. So we want to remember to pray for, uh, uh, for our nation as we try to, to work through this and figure out which way to go because uh, you know everybody says well just follow the science well that's fine but the science is has been more like a maze uh, or one of them little toys that you have for the for the animal that you know a little ball with a tail on it you flick the switch and it rolls around like a, a weasel running away uh, you just don't know where the science has been or going so uh, we want to pray that god will uh will watch over us because that that's the only thing we've got going for us mm -hmm. for sure uh, anyone else we yeah, yeah. Uh, if we'll remember daddy and also his brother singers and his brother tom he's getting worse with his dementia and stuff and daddy went over there and cut his grass for him and he had like a breathing spill thing he couldn't breathe but and his wife was gone but the neighbor evidently has been there when he struggled with that she knew how to get him in and get him on his machine or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> but anyway, that, um, there were kids, and also I start on with the part of my journey tomorrow. Excuse me, Friday. It'll be all in until next Friday when I have my surgery. Pastor, remember my sister and her family, they're, they're right, that hurricane's gonna go right through where they live. So, um, uh, but they live right in the edge of Arkansas. And uh, also I have a praise. I want to say thank God that Jig and I just celebrated our 57th anniversary. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, thank you. Yes, he is. good to you. I know. He's, he may be okay to you. <laughs> But that, that's neat. 50, 59? 58? 57. 57. Mm -hmm. That's all my life. <laughs> Close enough. It yeah. feels like it's been all year. Yeah, I know how you feel. Uh, I remember when, when we, because uh, she was 18 and I was 19 when we got married. And I remember when we hit 19 years. And I'm thinking, half my life has <laughs> been doing this, and uh, uh, and now we're 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 well over double. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I love that uh, we were old school enough that uh, we said for better or worse. So I can tell you, you already knew. You already knew it wasn't going to be, you know. Uh, so there's no surprise. So, but that is a praise. Uh, that is a praise. And, and, and there are people in the storm. I know the one, one hurricane that just never really made it to a hurricane, Mike or something. Uh, but this one has built up and it's, it looks like it's going to be pretty big when it comes up uh, and makes landfall. Mac. Uh, my niece has been sent home from the hospital to the hospital. And she's mm -hmm. got COPD and congestive heart failure. Uh. Pray for her mother. Yeah. Don't forget to pray for uh, Jasmine. Uh, Tammy Lewis, uh, uh, I sent her a text today. I haven't heard anything back yet. But uh, uh, she is, uh, is out of the hospital and she's at a, at a house. Her dad is, had come up from Florida. He's there. Uh, but she's not really responding. She's not really aware of anybody. I don't think there's any real communication or movement. Not, not really. So... Um, and at those places, you, you just don't know what's, what's going to be regained. Uh, and so, so just pray for them for that. She does. Um, she told me at first, you know, eye contact, there was none. It was like she knew there was nothing. She said, but now she said, I know. She said there's something wrong. And it really bothers Tammy because she feels like Jasmine's trying to communicate and yeah. just can't. Yeah, yeah it... You gotta, you gotta hold out hope. <coughs> you, uh, it, it's just, it's just a very, very hard time. So I continue to remember uh, Tammy Lewis and the, uh, and the family, but a bit praying for Jasmine. And Tammy had been really doing spiritually. She had been, I mean, we've known her for years too. You know, she's been in and out of church, and she was really starting to do so much better. And it's just like this is really trying to mess. Well, we need, to, we need to make sure that we, we really, we need to make sure we really focus on the fact that. That, uh, that there was a lot of things going on that, that not everybody saw all of it uh, other than God. But certainly there was some, some inertia, there was some momentum in our church family here uh, and as a church. And, and all of this stuff seemed like it just, you know, just put the brakes on everything. But it actually didn't. It appears that way because God is still moving. God is still touching lives. He's still... Uh, helping guide and strengthening he's doing all those things but it's one of those things it's almost like uh, Jesus is walking on the water uh, and, uh, and and we haven't got out of the boat yet right we're there we're there worried about the storm that's come up okay uh, and we're going oh wow what a bad bad storm well okay well well there he is all right we, we just got to go there we just got to go there even though things may be a rocking or whatever uh, now more we need to make sure we're focused because when it smooths out a little bit I don't want him to have wandered off someplace and we didn't keep up with him you know what I mean uh, we can see him now we need to stay close so so pray for the church its leadership uh, that we would be uh, that we would be faithful uh, we'd stay pure that we would stay uh, committed uh, and surrendered to him uh, it's a uh, it's just a time that we need to we need to just keep that focus as much as we can. Anyone else? All right, you uh, did you turn that on? Okay, you uh, you pray for these through the week and things, and uh, uh, we'll continue to pray. Always pray for our country and those leaders as well. Uh, there's there's uh, there's probably not anybody that needs it more uh, than those who are uh, are charting the course for our nation. Uh, and from all the past signs of as long as I can remember as an adult, uh, uh, there's a great, great, great need. Uh, and it just seems to be getting, getting worse uh, and that thing. But, uh, but God is the one. So let's, let's go now to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we do acknowledge that, uh, Lord, we, we recognize that you are, uh, you are God. Uh, Lord, you're the creator of everything, but Lord, you didn't you didn't shift it, you didn't mold it, you you made it and spoke it out of nothing. There were, there was 
nothing to be seen but the Father, the Spirit, and the Son. And, and you spoke, and, and we see what we see around us, Lord, in the perfection of creation. Even, even with the stain of sin, Lord, that which you created uh, at the end was considered very good. So, Lord, we pray that you would uh, take that same power and wisdom and will, and, Lord, that uh, you would look upon our needs, Lord, our situations, Lord, our spiritual needs as, uh, as the, the family of faith here, as this church, as individuals in this church and as families. And, Lord, that you would, you would help us to, uh, to have a passion for you, Lord, for the great commandment and the great commission, but Lord, just to love uh, each other and to be uh, more understanding, more forgiving, Lord, more humble. Uh, but Lord, that we would lift each other up. We would care about the spiritual needs, Lord, as much or more even than we care about the physical needs. Because all the physical world, whether it's relationships or social or financial or uh, all of those things, those will pass. But Lord, the spiritual needs, those will have an impact in this life, uh, Lord, but, uh, but more in the next. And I pray that you would just uh, help us to always draw near to you. But Lord, for all of those other needs that, that we've mentioned here, Lord, the unspoken, the ones that we uh, we call the usuals, Lord. Uh, it's not because they're not as important. It's not because uh, we overlooked them, but Lord, it's because we, we're always lifting them up. And Lord, so they're, uh, it's just a part of, of what we do. And so Lord, I pray that you would, uh, would know our hearts, Lord, and, and, and our needs and, and our concerns. And Lord, according to your will, we pray for strength, for healing, for restoration. Lord, for recovery, we pray for, for good health. We pray for uh, ability, Lord, to, uh, to come back for those who, uh, Lord, who find themselves in a difficult place. And, and Lord, uh, thinking that uh, it may not get better. But Lord, uh, anything is possible uh, in your will. And we pray that, uh, Lord, that as you wish good for us, as you bring about good in us, through everything that we experience, Lord, help us to have the faith to trust you, even when we don't understand, uh, and Lord, even when we don't, we don't like. Uh, Lord, it's not about whether we like it, Lord, it's about whether we love you enough to trust you and accept, uh, Lord, uh, uh, your will. So bless and guide and keep us, Lord, help us to, to learn and to grow, help us to have a, a passion for you, Lord, that, uh, that it touches every part of our lives. And Lord, that uh, we will strive to, uh, to give you honor and praise with everything we do, everything we say. In thy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, <coughs> what did we talk about last week? All right. We did talk about chocolate milk, didn't we? I mentioned chocolate milk one time. Uh, so, uh, so James, you jumped right in there with both feet. Uh, what is milk a reference to? Milk and meat. What are they? What are they a reference to? Okay. And how do we learn more and more about Christ through what? The Word. Okay. The the milk and the meat uh, are are various levels of of God's revelation as we discover in His Word, okay? And so we talked about Scripture. We talked about hearing Scripture, that that's good. We talked about reading Scripture, and that's better because uh, we're engaged mentally and physically with the process. And so everything that's, uh, uh, that's there, more of it uh, is, is going to stick. But we also talked about studying it. Uh, and a lot of people think that reading is what study is. And study is just reading uh, with maybe some intent, uh, but not exactly. Studying is, is where you, you, you take that surface, uh, but like in a lake, uh, you go deeper. All right. I, I mentioned the, the, the glass bottom boat last Wednesday, but I also used it Sunday. It worked well Sunday. We, we, need, to, we need to look and see that down below there's more. When I was a kid and we used to go to... Uh, uh, a lake and swim, uh, you know, you could see up. And when you when you went in the water, I used to always open my eyes when I went in the water uh, and and swim around. I thought that was pretty cool. 
But we didn't live in, uh, uh, in the islands where you can look down through the water. It's so clear you can see 30, 40, 50 feet down and see the, the bottom. Okay, I've, I've anchored out down in the Caribbean, our ship, in 50, 60, 75 feet of water. And you can go inside a ship and you can look down and you can see fish swimming, but you can see the, the rocks on the bottom and things. Um, it was different. But if you got somebody had an old set of uh, uh, goggles, remember those old goggles? Oh, yeah. They, they were big and round and kind of oval kind of, and then they had that little plastic uh, thing that was supposed to seal up on your head. And the only way they did that is if you took that strap and you tied it up enough so it could be a tourniquet. You know, if it was on your leg, it cut off all the blood. Here, you got to make sure your ears are on the outside because you'd lose the top part of them. And then you look down, but when you look down, it's amazing what you could see. You know, it's so much easier to see. You can, you can see better. So, so studying is going deeper. But tonight, I said we're going to talk about some other things, right? Uh, and I'm going to admit that a couple of these things are difficult for me. Okay? Are a little difficult for me. So we're going to talk tonight about memorizing Scripture. We're going to talk about meditating on Scripture. And we're going to talk about applying Scripture. Okay? Memorize God's Word, right? Uh, Psalm 119.11, you know, I hide thy word in my heart that I might not sin. There's Colossians 3.2, Ephesians 6.17, uh, Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Uh, and if, I know I'm going through this stuff. I have these things printed out. Uh, uh, and I can, I can get you these uh, next week. I'll bring the other weeks, okay? Would you like that? Okay, I'll bring those for these weeks. Uh, I thought about it and I, I printed out the masters, but I didn't. I didn't run off the copy. So, but I'll get those uh, for you, and I'll have them next week, uh, and it'll have these things. But basically, you want to memorize God's word because it supplies spiritual power. <laughs> it gives us spiritual power. How does God's word give us spiritual power, or what is spiritual power? Remember, this is the Wednesday night crowd, right? Because y'all are... <laughs> ammunition. A ammunition. Okay. What is spiritual power? It's ammunition? Well, it can be used in our battle. Did Jesus told us... Say again? I said, in a roundabout way, it's ammunition dealing with the devil. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll give you that. That's not what I'm after. Spiritual power. Spiritual power. Ammunition is a manifestation of spiritual power. Right? Okay. Would it be knowledge? Hmm. Now that's good. See, that's better because that's that that's still a tool. But 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 it but it's more it's more closely aligned with scripture, okay, uh, uh, and, and what we would think of power or where power or the source of power uh, or power in action, and I think that's kind of what you were talking about with ammunition. Um, but all I could think about was my thirty thirty. You know, I thought, yeah, I got some of them big long bullets. I like them, okay. Uh, but that that's a nice tool. So spiritual power. Spiritual power. Give me some more about spiritual power. Where, where does spirit talk about spiritual power? Where does it come from? What is it good for? It comes from the Holy Spirit. It comes from the Holy Spirit. Okay. Why does it come from the Holy Spirit? And I'm going to assume that you, you mean Him as the person uh, recognizing that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all the same. They all have power. But specifically the Holy Spirit. Why? I'm talking about the power He gives us. Okay, okay. The power He I mean, gives us. The power that He has is the power He gives us. Okay. I mean, going back to what I said, knowledge is power. Ah, when well, you apply it. Better is insight. Right. When you, knowledge is power when it's utilized. Okay. The world says knowledge is power. Will says knowledge is potential power or power with potentiality. But until you actually do something with it, uh, it it's not it's not there. Uh, then Buddy, Buddy's got a, an old what? 
Model A, or he's got some old Ford tractor that's about a thousand years old and stuff on his thing. Is there potential in that thing? Is there any power in that thing? Or you're just going to have to assume it. Well, because I don't think he's ever got it started for, for a while, okay? But it used to, okay? So, so power is the Holy Spirit. He, he provides power. But remember, uh, we, we, when we talk about Scripture, when we talk about power, uh, uh, it, 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 it is the knowledge of God. But it's not the knowledge of God that you know. It's the knowledge of God that shapes us. And there's a power uh, in it to shape us. But when it shapes us, remember all that knowledge that we gain. Uh, and I said this before. Everything you know about God through Scripture, every experience in history, every experience in your life, every every event that that God is moving, all of those things, every single thing, is designed to shape you and to change you, or to make you better, more like Christ. Okay. So the power isn't just in what it. Uh, what it is as much as that what it is is what it can do. Does that make sense? Okay. Sitting over there is great, but over here doing is so much better. And, and the reason I, I, I want to make sure we, we, we see that connection and that, that truth is because too often people that sit in churches, they think, well, I know Scripture, and that's, that's all powerful. Well, then why don't you do Scripture? Why don't you do Scripture? You know, the guy is talking to his wife. He said, yeah, I want to go to Israel. I want to go to Israel where they, you know, where they uh, uh, and get out there or, or wherever the Middle East is. And they had that, where the Ten Commandments came. And I want to stand up and I want to read the Ten Commandments. I want to be able to go there and read the Ten Commandments, right, where God gave them to the, gave them to the, uh, the Israelites. And his wife says, well, why don't you just stay here and keep them? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that could be good. But there's power there. Well, power is the Holy Spirit's venue, okay? Right? That, that sort of, God does some things, Jesus does some things, and the Holy Spirit does some things in their, in their personhood. And one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is that He is the power source. He's the dynamo. He's the one that kind of uh, engages us and steers us. He's the one who's what? Who, who's using the Word to shape and conform us. Right? Life and experience is helping. Um, but, uh, uh, but, uh, but when you do it with the Word, that, that makes it better. Anybody ever cut metal or stone? You know, when you get something real fast, when we were watching them do marble and stuff, when they cut granite, you know what they always have is a real sharp blade, but what else do they have by the blade? Water. They have water. Why? Cool the blade down and help it to cut, make sure the stone's nice, and, and you get a what? A better, sure, straighter, smoother, more safe cut, right? All that kind of stuff. Well, the, the Spirit is the power and the Word. Uh, the Spirit's that water and the power is the blade. It's still propelled by God, but the Spirit is there going to enable it. He's going to smooth it. He's going to make everything work so much better. And so we do that. So, so it, it, it supplies power. It strengthens your faith. Proverbs 22, 17 and 19. 1 Samuel 2, 30. Uh, it's the idea that our strength is, our faith is strengthened. Well, we know that Scripture in Romans says, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It encourages us. It's a mean of guidance. Again, Psalm 119 uh, in uh, verse 24, Ephesians 4, 29, uh, both talk about how the Word of God should inform us and, uh, uh, and guide us, okay? Uh, the, was it what Luther? It was Calvin. Uh, John Calvin uh, gave uh, some, uh, some uses of Scripture. One of them was a bridle. He used the idea that Scripture is like a bridle on a horse, right? Well, what's the purpose of, uh, of, of, the, of the bridle? What's the purpose of the bit? In a, it's a steer. It's a steer. Okay. Now, in that little itty-bitty little itty bitty bit in there, right? It's not very big, but it turns the biggest horse. Now, I've seen a few of them, but you need to have a little bit of arm to go with it, all right? They're pretty hard-headed. I imagine that's a little bit like some of us sometimes. We get the bit between our teeth, we think we're going to go, and God trying to steer us over there, but we, I think I like it over there. 
But that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to help steer us and guide us. It stimulates meditation. Psalm 119, 97. I'm sure again, they're just saying, listen, you know, I want to take your word, but I want to think about it. I want to internalize it. All right, we're not going to get there yet. Okay, we're going to talk about memorizing first. All right? All right, here you go. And I've had people say, oh, oh, I can't memorize Scripture. I can't memorize Scripture. I, I'm, uh, I'm too old to memorize Scripture. And I've made a couple of people mad, kind of. <laughs> I know that surprises you, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I come up with an answer. I say, well, well, what was your name again? And they tell me. And I said, well, and your phone number. Okay, well, then obviously you can remember something, right? <laughs> and memorizing Scripture is not where we've got to do it all, is it? I mean, in, in, in the, the Spirit, with that power, going to help us learn the stuff? Well, I think so. If we're listening to them and we ask them, it's amazing. Uh, uh, they said at Sears, when we're talking about sales, I was in sales, and I was 100% commissioned. So if you sold something, you made money. If you didn't, you just wasted your time. And I don't want to hang out and, and give all my time to, to sit in the Sears building. It just, it just never was that good. But selling something. But they said the biggest reason that you, you sell or not sell is always, always been dependent on whether you ask for the sale. You spend 20, 30, 40 minutes an hour showing people product and explaining it and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, 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 and then they go, okay, here's my card. You know, let me know. And then they walk off. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking you know, you, you may have wanted to ask them if they wanted to buy. I mean, they were looking they came in here. <coughs> it makes a difference. So we need to make sure that we, uh, uh, we, need to, we need to ask ourselves. We need to try to do that. So uh, uh, we know those things. Ask the Spirit. He will help us. Have a plan. Have a plan. You know, it's amazing. When I was a youth pastor and we would go to youth camp and we would have uh, literature, we would do uh, special studies for the youth and everything, they gave us all kind of tools. Uh, uh, they would do studies, they would have little books uh, to, to help them uh, know how to memorize scripture, how to have a quiet time, how to, uh, you know, to, to, to look and seek God's will, how to, how to grow in their faith. And, and they explained it in, in pretty uh, simple terms, okay, uh, for, for, for youth, okay. And I always thought, well, that's good. And then, and then I got out of youth ministry or I started looking around as adults and I thought, you know what? <laughs> I wish I'd kept some of that stuff for the adults. Oh, Brother Will, you know, I've been a Christian for 43 years, all right? Well, that's fine. I'm glad you told me because I never could have told on my own. <laughs> never could have told. Because I don't see it. You're not showing it. That power is there. But again, the power has got to be utilized. And so we need to make sure that we are memorizing that scripture because that's going to help us. What did, what did you, you know, and we use, we know these two illustrations. See, and that's what's funny. This is, this is Wednesday night. This is a group that knows the stories, knows the stuff. But yet we're just like those youth who didn't know. We still got to do it. What did Jesus, when he was tempted, what, what was his, what was his, uh, what was his ammunition, as it were? That's what I was talking about earlier. It is written. Well, actually, he told, he told Peter, get behind me. He, he said it was written and, and used scripture, yes. Okay. Well, sure. Well, why, why, didn't he, why didn't he just wave his hand and make the devil go, whoop, like a soap bubble? Because of the power of the word. Then you do that later on when you need the word. Amen. Good answer. Good answer. All right? James? A man deserves a hamburger. You, may, you, see, you see that gets taken care of wherever he wants. All right? Uh, that's a great answer. Because Jesus is God. I'm not responsible for passing out. I, I, just, I just encourage. Uh, he's God, but he's fully man. Now, we don't have the fully God, although we have the Holy Spirit. And, and Jesus, according to Jesus, that's actually better. That we have the Spirit instead of him standing over there. Because we're going to be over there somewhere. We're going to be all around the inside of the world. And we won't have him. But with a spear, we do. And we're not going to have all that stuff. And we're going to need to face the same kind of things. And so the word of God, you've got to have it in you. Now, 
They used to tell us when I was a kid, well, I don't know, when my kids were kids, they would do stuff and they would say, okay, you got you to gotta do what? When you're going to recite a verse of Scripture, they teach you. You got to say the passage, right? What it is, where it's at, the address, as it were. Then you got to say the verse, all right? And then you got to what? You got to say the address again, right? John 3, 16. For God to love the world, yada, yada, yada. John 3, 16. Right? And that's a good way. Isn't that good? Nobody told me that when I was a boy. Nobody told me that. I went to the Methodist church when I was a child. Uh, about 5th, 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th grade. No church. We were moving out to the farm. I was working every Saturday and Sunday getting ready to move. Okay? We just kind of dropped out a little bit there for a while. And then I got in uh, about 8th grade, ninth grade, I got back in church, all right, the Baptist church. Uh, but I was a youth then, right? And, uh, and everybody knows that youth know everything, so no one tried to teach me anything. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so that, that's a place where that's a little hard for me. I know Scripture, all right? Uh, and I even know somewhat where it is. One of my professors in, uh, at the seminary used to, used to harass me. We're good friends, Dr. Jones. And... Uh, uh, he'd say something, and I'd say, well, yada, 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 yada. He'd say, okay, well, where is it? And I could say, that's in the New Testament. <laughs> or a few times I had to go, well, that's in the Bible. Uh, and then somebody else would go, well, that's over here, yada, 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 yada. And I'd go, that's right. Uh, no idea. So I had to work at that. So we want to memorize God's Word, but also not just memorize. Now, remember, remember we're hearing, we're reading. We're studying, we're uh, memorizing, all right? How many times, uh, uh, and again, this is good now, even though when I was a kid, if you didn't have your Bible in your hand, well, you, you kind of like didn't have your rifle, right? Okay? Nowadays, when everybody's, well, I got mine on my phone. Well, that's fine. Let's, let's look and see how long you, how many times you've been in that app. When's the last time you opened that app as opposed to Sudoku or, or Crossword Puzzle? Okay, but uh, we're, we're getting deeper, more foundational. Okay, so that memorizing, because then what? You, you put it in there, it's, it's a lot on your path, uh, it's hiding your heart so you're not sinning against God. Why? Because you know better. And the closer we are, the more we know of God, the more likely we are to what? To not sin. Oh, temptation, run away, okay, and stay away. And so those things are good for us, but the next one down is going to be meditating on it, all right? Now, meditating on God's Word uh, is sort of deep thinking on the truths and spiritual realities revealed in Scripture for the purpose of understanding application and prayer. Reading and studying are like dips of a tea bag, while meditation is like a long seep that produces better flavor. Does that make sense? Uh, if you if you take your tea bag and you just don't 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 you know you start to see a little bit of color starting to come into water you take it out that's about enough for me yeah sure drink that water okay but if you leave it in there more of that flavor and that water mingle and then it becomes what it becomes indistinguishable and, and all that flavor permeates and fills up the entire volume of water. Uh, and if you leave it a little bit longer, it gets what? A little stronger. Okay. Now, in a tea bag, you can get a big enough pot and a small enough tea bag, and you can run out of tea before you run out of water. Okay. You can, you can make that happen. With Scripture, you ain't never going to do it. All right. We throw this thing in the ocean, and it's the strongest thing of tea you ever have in your entire life. All right. I like, I like strong tea. Uh, when, when I make tea, we boil water, put the tea bags in, we pour the water over it, and I let it sit there, and, and Sandra will go and she'll look at it, you, you, you want me to make it up? No, not yet, it's only been one day, we've got to leave it in there for a while, right? <laughs> uh, you want to let it seep, okay? And that's what meditation does. Uh, it's commanded by God, and all the people in Scripture that are godly model it, right? David talks about, you know, being in the Word day and night. You see, he's not just reading it. It's not just that he's studying it or memorizing it. He is meditating on it. All right? Uh, we, we use an old-fashioned term sometimes. I don't know if you all know it. Ruminating? Do you know the word ruminating? Okay. 
all right? Uh, look it up. Ruminating. It's just like meditating, and it's the idea of you just thinking over about something and, and pondering something. You're, you're digging a little bit deeper, you know, you're going a little farther, and you're just kind of doing it, you know, just not like you're sitting down, all right. And, and this is not where you've got to sit with your legs all crossed up and, and, and make your fingers do funny things. It's not like that, okay? Uh, none of that sort of stuff. This is just in your day, this thought is in your head. All day. You come back to it. You think about it. You get a break in the day. Uh, you're driving somewhere. Think about that scripture. That's why uh, uh, doing a daily devotion. Uh, we do the um, we do the Jeremiah. Uh, we've got a Stanley. She's got a Beth Moore. Uh, there's all kind of stuff you can get out there. I've got an Oswald Chambers. Uh, and and that daily thing. And there's there's a, a passage. There's a little thing. And then some of them will put a little prayer about it, all right? Well, fine. Do that in the morning, and then all day long, think about that. Anytime you got, anytime you got something, you train yourself to think about that. And, and it'll become more. And the idea isn't that you're going you're gonna to learn more about that, but that the Holy Spirit is going to use that so that you'll learn more about God. So if you don't learn Scripture to know Scripture, you learn Scripture to know God. And if your goal is to memorize the whole Bible, well, that's sort of worthy. But I'd rather, I'd rather know a lot less of it and know God better. Because I'm not, I'm not going to heaven to see Scripture. Even though Jesus is the Word in the flesh. Uh, you know. so, so that meditating is something that we need. Uh, Gosh, uh, just like we were joking out here, right? <laughs> Jigger came up here. I don't know if you could call that abuse. <laughs> it was a tough moment, all right? But they say that stuff you see, you can't unsee. Computers, garbage in, garbage out, all right? So stuff comes in, uh, and, and we're going to be full up with something, Amen. Now, we're not going to tell you, well, you know, what you're full of, all right? We're not going to do that. That's not, that's not the goal for this, okay? Because some people get that, that. That's pretty nasty. But you're going to be full of something. Your days are going to be full of something. Your mind is going to be full of something. And your heart is going to be full of something. And meditating on God's Word is going to help you to be full of God and His Word more than everything else. That's why Paul, I think it was in Philippians uh, 3 or 4, he said, uh, 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 whatsoever is good, is pure, you know, is right and, and beneficial, think on these things, he said. Uh, because what we put in, you can't take it out. Did you know that when you, when you go on your computer and you mess something up and you go to delete it, do you think it's actually gone? Oh, it's in there. How do you think they catch crooks? You know, you've got to delete it to about 8 or 19 different places and you don't even know where they're at. You know, I'm not smart enough to figure that out. But, but you, you've got to, you got to. It's like everybody says, well, uh, oh, I don't know that answer. You know, like someone said, uh, well, you took Hebrew, right? And you took, you took uh, uh, Greek in, in center. I said, sure I did. And they go, well, well what, is, what does this word mean? And I, you know, and someone would go, well, I don't know. Right? Well, I can't say that because I know what it is. I can't recall what it means, but I know it's somewhere in there. There's an answer. You know, they say if we could, if we could use more than what four or five percent of our brain, I don't I don't know that I want a pill that would make us be able to use so much more. I'd hate to get that pill and discover I'm no smarter. There's just nothing else up there. It's just nothing else. That's all it is. So so we want to meditate and do it. Uh, there's a promise of success. All right, Joshua one eight. Those who meditate find success. Uh, uh, Psalm 1, it says those, you know, get, get in the Word, look for wisdom. Wisdom as the Word, okay? Uh, and, and it's going to be good for you all through your life. Uh, Psalm 19, uh, 1 through 6, 1 through 6 talks about uh, creation revealing God, but then it goes to verse uh, 7 through uh, 11 or 12 or so there, uh, and it talks about how good uh, the Word is 
to reveal God. Not that there is one, but Him. And at the end it says, listen, it's better than honey. It's better than gold and silver. It's better than all these things. And meditating and putting it inside of us and letting it change us. Do you know how to make a superhero? What's the surest way to make a superhero? Hmm? Put their outfit on. No, I, I'm pretty sure. I, I, I used to wear a Superman. I think one year I did. It doesn't work. All right. What's the surest way to create a superhero? By the comments, what's the surest way to create a superhero? You got to fall in a vat of toxic waste or get bit by a spider. <laughs> spider Man. Spider -Man. <laughs> All, right. All right. So th those are ways that that uh, uh, that, that you you make a superhero. All right. And I had a real good point, but I'm not sure uh, if I remember it. Uh, it took me so long to get it out, you know, and sometimes I lose track. Uh, but but we, need, we, we, need, we need to find that power in here. We need to find it in here. And if we will meditate, there will be success. We will be successful. Uh, gosh, uh, you, you, uh, you take the light in God's Word, uh, it, it's, it's just going to make you so much better. You're going to be better than your enemies. Psalm 119, 98, 99. Uh, Meditation takes uh, a concentration, right? That's the whole idea. And, and how come we don't meditate? Well, we don't concentrate very much anymore. We don't always think about what we're seeing or reading. All right? Anybody watch the news and get up and you wonder, I wonder, what, I wonder what's happening in the world today? Now, a lot of it you, you should just skip or maybe not even turn the TV on. But there's times when stuff tends to, to, to it tends to fly by us, and, and 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 so much of the world. How can you concentrate? You know, people that said that they can't study unless they have music on. Okay, I can almost buy that. Except I listen to the music sometimes that they tell me they use, and I'm thinking, you do <coughs> that, and you study. Oh, no wonder you're in the second grade for the eighth time. Okay. I listen to music when I'm uh, when I write my sermons and I write these things. I got music on, and don't go. Oh yeah, now I can tell. Yeah, I see why. No, but I listen to uh, Dan Gibson, Solitudes. You Google on YouTube Dan Gibson, Solitudes, and you click on any one of them. It's soft music. It's nature sounds. Uh, he's got a couple that are weird. I don't really care about. They're more sea stuff and whales and things. I like the ones about the mountains and the nature and stuff. Ah, you can you put that on and it's just background. It's not something I listen to. When I'm studying it and, or when I'd be meditating, I don't want words. I go down I go down the road and drive it and sometimes when we're together, a lot of times when I'm by myself, if I want to think, I turn the radio off. I don't want any other distraction. I don't need something to to vie for my attention with God. Uh, I have enough time, trouble, sometimes staying focused. Anybody ever wake up in the middle of the night? Or before you go to bed or when you first wake up and say, I'm going to pray for, for, for 15 minutes. <laughs> Anybody ever done that? Somebody say yes, because I don't want to feel like I'm the only one. Okay, all right, it happens. But we want to meditate on this word. Uh, think about it. Uh, look, remember those questions when you study, right? When you, We talk about different questions when you study, all right? Ask those questions. Think about the answers. Come up with an answer. Let that, let that answer permeate through you, all right? Uh, you, uh, you've got a situation, you've got two choices. Well, think on them. Think on them. See, see how far it goes, and then you can help decide. Well, God's Word, you think on those things, those answers, and it'll help guide and shape you. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. So we, uh, we memorize, we meditate. But we also, and this is a biggie, we apply. All right? A friend of mine, uh, the, the pastor of the church I came from, his name is Will as well. Uh, it's William Abernathy. Uh, he's a little guy about this tall. Uh, he couldn't see over our flowers. Uh, some of the time. He's about like Carl. Well, he's, I think he's a little taller than Carl, isn't he? 
Maybe, maybe. Uh, but anyway, Will Averley is a great guy, godly man. Uh, I love him to death. Uh, he, uh, uh, we had a circle of friends that uh, uh, knew both of us and interacted in a lot of classes and, and things. And so uh, they were, you know, the whole two wills, what are you going to do? Uh, well, since he was little and I was muscular, uh, <laughs> uh, they called him Little Will and they called me Good Looking Will <laughs> or Big Will, whichever one came out first. And so that's how we went for years at seminary. And then when I served at the same church, he, uh, oh man, he was going real happy to get up there and tell everybody, this is Big Will. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I want to start to do a little something, you know. Uh, it didn't work as, as well. But, uh, but, but we want to make sure that we, uh, when he went and did his doctorate of ministry, it's a very practical thing. He did it in preaching. And I thought, okay, well, what are you going to get a practical you know, doctorate in preaching. But he was focused narrowly in preaching, and his focus in preaching was application. You see, because it, the, the, the way we were taught to preach is that we're to take the Word and then we're to tell you what it says and what it means. All right? Every, every scripture, every passage tells something. It's trying to convey truth, principles, and things like that. So you explain what it is, all right? Uh, just like we read with Nehemiah, remember? He said that they, they read the law, and then all those Levites and stuff, they did what? They helped the people understand. Okay? Well, that's good. You, you've got to read it and understand it, but the next step is, and that's probably as important, uh, it is as important as the other two, is that you apply it. How should that change me? How should that make me better? How should I live in light of this truth? All right? If God loves me and offers His grace and, and forgiveness uh, for repentance, how should I live? Well, then I should live repentant and I should confess my sin, right? That's what I should do in response to this. Uh, and so application is important. Um, it said it must go from the page to life. James 1, 22, 25. John 13, 17. Both of them are going to tell you uh, that, you know, you need to know it, but you also need to do it. You remember Paul talking about the man that sees himself in a, in a mirror? All right? And then as soon as he goes away, he what? He forgets. Okay. Well, what that is, is that mirror is the Word, the Word that shows us true and real. And if it doesn't affect and change us, make us better, when we leave, we're just like we were. We've gained nothing. You've got to know it, but you've got to apply it to make a difference. Uh, you're always going to find an application. You're always going to find an application. All right. I, I've said uh, uh, for a number of years, in, in every verse of Scripture, there's going to be some sense of encouragement, but there's also going to be some sense of, uh, of, uh, of challenge. Okay? Comfort and challenge. You're always going to find comfort and challenge. Uh, because it, it's to know God, right? But it's to become more like God. To know God is the comfort, but to become more like God is the challenge. It is for me. Okay? And so that is good. We, and we need to understand how the text was applied to give us some insight on how it should be applied. Remember the questions we ask about uh, when you're studying Scripture? Is what is he saying? What did it mean to them? And what should it mean? And how should it make me better today? That's application. What did they understand it should do for them, to them? And the same thing for me today. So we need to make sure we understand those. Uh, you meditate to, to, to understand that. Okay. Uh, Psalm 119.5. Uh, because, you know, you want to ask, uh, does this text reveal something that I should know about God, but I should believe about God? Does it reveal praise or thanks or trust for God? Uh, should I pray about something? Uh, do I need to have a new attitude about something? Anybody want a new attitude? Well, I think when I got saved, I got a new heart and a mind. <coughs> attitude, attitude comes and goes. But yeah, I could use a better attitude, right? 
Uh, you need to make a decision about something. Do something for the sake of Christ or others or myself. We need to make sure that we're focused on that. All right? And then when you, when you get to this point, you need to respond specifically. All right? I love it when people say, Oh, Lord, forgive me for all my sins. Do you think that is near as effective as praying for each sin? Well, of course not. That's like, that's like asking God, God bless all the members of our church. You want to be all the members of your church or do you want to be Jigger and Francis and Sander and Mac? I'd rather, I'd rather him get my name somewhere in there. Well, I don't know all my sins. Well, now that's not necessarily <laughs> true. And if for some reason you've forgotten them, well, then that's a problem too because you're letting them hang out there too long. But don't worry. Don't worry. When you're trying to pray, the Holy Spirit will help you remember them and confess them. And if you don't remember and, and you don't ask then, well, then you go out and try to do something good for the Lord, and then the devil's going to remind you of all those sins. Well, you can't do that. You ain't no good. I saw that time that you took that cookie. Your wife held it out there, and you picked it up, and you put it right in your mouth. You know you shouldn't have done that. So we need to make sure that we, we, we specifically look at these things Verses as we, we memorize and we meditate, but then we apply them to our lives. I've told people, yeah, I said, I'm not the man I was a long time ago. And they're going, really? I said, yeah, 40 years ago, 43 years ago, we got married. I wasn't anywhere near like this. I'm not talking just physical. I'm talking about, you know, mental, spiritual. I'm talking about that. And, uh, uh, and, and sometimes I wonder, and I almost look around and go think, oh, my goodness, if this is the best I am back then, she loved me then? Of course, she didn't know that much about me then. Thank goodness. Praise the Lord, right? Uh, we've learned through the years. But it's the same way. I don't want to be like I was. There's even a song out. So I don't think it's uh, real recent, but it's in the last few years. Uh, I'm not sure who sings it. Uh, but it talks about, I don't, I don't want to go back to the man I was. And the one funny thing about uh, uh, becoming a Christian and growing to be like Christ, right? It's not a, it's not a flat level that you're working on, okay? It's a climb. And if you're not going up, do you know where you're going? You're going backwards, okay? There is there's no there's, there's no I can stand here and pause for thirty years. That's like they say churches are either growing or plateaued or they're dying. And that's, that's, that's a misnomer. That's inaccurate. There's churches that are growing and there's churches that are dying. Oh, well, you're just plateaued. No, that means that you're just dying slow. If you're not growing in your faith and in your walk, and you can't grow in your faith if you're not growing in your walk. If it's not a climb, well then you don't have it and it's not doing anything for you. So we need to, we, we, and it may be real slow, it may be real slow to climb, but it's, it's still not growing. I don't care if I'm, if I'm declining fast or slow. Is that what I want in my life? The doctor comes in, well, you're going to die in two days. You're going to die in 18 days. You know, how much of a difference are you talking about here? I don't think that's that much, buddy. I want to be getting better. I don't even mind if it takes me a little bit of time to get better, but I want to be aiming that way instead of the other way. Well, it's spiritual. It's the same way. And the Scripture and having a spiritual discipline of dealing with Scripture is going to be one of our best, if not the best, way to get us close to God. Let that word work in us. Remember, God said my word won't come back void. What, it, what I send it out to do, it will accomplish. And it's, one of its purposes is to make us more like Him. Let's pray. Father, help us to be more like You because we, uh, we look to Your Word to, 
uh, to hear it, to read it, to study it, to memorize it, to meditate on it, and, and, and just soak up all the goodness and the richness. But Lord, we also, by the Holy Spirit, Lord, we apply it. Lord, because if we know it and it makes no difference in who we are and what we do, then Lord, it makes no good for us as either. But Lord, help, it, help us to yield to that. Uh, because Lord, it is good, it is rich, and it has a place in uh, us being conformed to the image of Christ. So bless us and guide us, Lord, because we're going to fail you. We're going to stumble. We're going to be weak. We're going to go slow. We're going to go. We're going to have ups and downs, Lord. But but you love us, and Lord, you won't give up on us. Lord, help us not to give up on you. In Thy name, we pray. Amen. Never watch reflections.